Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Welcome back to The Loft, my weekly YouTube show. Tonight I got a very special guest here. I got my very good friend, Lisa Caputo. Me and Lisa know each other. She is actually married to one of my best friends for almost 40 years. And uh, welcome to the show, Lisa. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm excited to do this. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, Lisa, you have a very inspirational story. But before we jump into all that, can I just ask you where you were born and raised? Sure. So I was born in Montclair, New Jersey. Okay. And um, I was born to a big Italian, into a big Italian family, uh -huh. you know, um, big holidays, yeah. lots of food, yeah. you know, um, loud, you know, mm -hmm. how, how it goes. So, yeah. You know, the long table with all the food, my grandparents you know, held us together like glue, you know? Okay. So, so what, yeah. what kind of kid were you, Lisa? What kind of kid were you? Were you a creative kid? Um... I was, as a child, I was a big attention seeker. <laughs> <laughs> um, I loved to put on shows and, you know, create dances for my family. And um, I was definitely a funny kid. You know, I tried to get everybody's attention by making jokes and yeah. stuff like that, but yeah. Okay, Lisa, so we know you have a very inspirational story. Could you tell us a little bit about your past and about your inspirational story? Sure, so, um, you know, after we moved, okay, so I was born in Jersey and um, I was raised by my mom because my parents got divorced when I was four. So okay. it was a single mom, one sister, you know, she did the best she could. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, we went to a Catholic school, you know, for the majority of my childhood. And okay. um, when we moved to Florida, when I was 11, you know, things changed. You know, okay. I didn't know how to act. I didn't know how to dress. I didn't know. I didn't have any friends, you know, mm -hmm. so I went to what I knew best. And that was, let me get attention from the boys or from the way I dressed or from the way I acted. Uh -huh. So I started uh -huh. acting out and, okay. um, and dressing provocatively, mm -hmm. you know, uh, to get the boys attention. Yeah. And, yeah. um, you know, growing up and, you know, without, without a lot of friends, you know, I had a few here and there, but I never felt like I fit in, okay. you know, I was always like the outside looking in. And, um, I found my group, you know, the, the ones that hung out in the park, you know, the ones yeah. that were smoking and drinking yeah. and, um, mm -hmm. and that's where I felt accepted. So that's the path that I eventually took. And, um, and, you know, I graduated high school. Um, you know, I, I didn't really have to study as a kid. I was a smart kid, you yeah. know, uh, but um, I didn't put that first and foremost. I wanted to hang out with my friends and have fun. So yeah. I started drinking a lot and, you know, smoking weed and doing other stuff. Yeah. And um, yeah. that led me to uh, a destructive life, you know. Okay. Um, I met a guy um, when I was 19 and I started doing a lot more heavy, heavy drugs. Okay. And, um, you know, of course I moved in with him. I thought he was a guy and uh, um, it ended up being an abusive relationship for six and a half years. Nice. So, um, you know, I didn't know anything about, you know, getting out of it. I didn't know, I, I hid it. I hid it from my family. I hid the drugs from my family. Mm -hmm. You know, um, nobody knew what was going on. Okay. Um, you know, with the black eyes, I'd say that I, the cabinet hit me in the, you know, hit me in the face when yeah. I was getting something out of the cabinet. You know, um, but the excuses got got to be minimal. You know, uh, eventually they they figured it out, and uh, and I found my way out. I went to a domestic violence shelter. And, um, and then eventually my mom helped me get an apartment. Um, and my abuser, uh, came to find me and, um, showed up at my doorstep and, uh, I almost died that day. Wow. So, um, you know, fast forward a little bit. I, um, 
My okay, as a result of my drug use and the abuse, mm-hmm. my son, I had a I had a kid with him, and um, my son had to go with, live with my mom, mm-hmm. um, and I spiraled out of control completely. Wow. I wow. Um, I didn't care what happened to me. I had no reason for leave, you know, for living. Yeah. You know, and that was my son, and I lost him. So, um, so my life took it a huge left turn and I started getting arrested a lot. Um, my, my criminal record is horrible and it's not something I'm proud of, you know, but, um, but it's part of my story. So I can't, you know, I can't shun it, you know? Um, eventually when, uh, things start getting bad enough, I, I, I wanted to have a, some kind of better life, you know, but I didn't know how. Mm-hmm. Um, I was in another relationship for like 10 years and it was, you know, you love the person, but he was my drug buddy. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't a real healthy relationship. You know, yeah. he was my running partner. Mm-hmm. And um, eventually I, I just had to let go and ask for help. Yeah. Um, yeah. my mom passed away when in 2011 and, um, and funny. you know, I, I talked to her on a regular basis, you know, she yeah. is my light. Um, and I was talking to my mom one day, you know, in heaven. And I was like, you know, mommy, please get me out of this. I, I gotta get out of this, you yeah. know, it brings me to tears, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. and, um, uh, two weeks later I was actually, um, here in Ocala, Mm -hmm. um, I reached out to a friend and he gave me the number of, uh, a treatment center that he went to. And I ended up here two weeks later. Um, and I never looked back. Wow. Great. Great. So, so those were the events that actually decided for you to change right there. Yeah. 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 Okay. It got dark enough for me for sure. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So, so Lisa, what, what keeps you motivated every day? What keeps you motivated every day to, to be different, to have this different <laughs> life, to be an inspiration to other people? What keeps you motivated every day? Um, I don't want to die. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I don't want to go back out and, and start using again and helping other people see this and kind of showing them the way yeah that is what like fuels my soul you know like um helping other women you know in domestic violence relationships and like i get to speak at conferences you know about uh domestic violence which is incredible you know for me for a person like me yeah you know um but helping other people is what drives me um showing them that there is a way out that's what that's what helps me on a daily basis yeah. for sure wow yeah now lisa if you could go back <clears throat> excuse me if you could go back to your younger self what would you go back and tell her <laughs> um so my younger self uh don't worry about what people think of you mm-hmm. that is one thing that you know you know i i know we all do it you know it's are they going to like me? Or what are they going to think of me? But like, honestly, it doesn't matter. Like, it does not matter. You come into this world by yourself and you're leaving by yourself. So, yeah. you know, it's do what you want to do and what fuels your passion and soul. Like, I, I, I always worried about what other people thought, you know, if uh-huh. I was good enough, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, and, and just to be yourself, Yeah. be yourself. Yeah. You know, I know, like, I'm just finding out who I am and, you know, I'm 41 years old, you know, um, Mm -hmm. but I have this story, you know, that gets to like show people like you can do it. Like, you know, I I just definitely don't worry about what people think of you. That is (laughs) top of the list. Uh, On another token, if, if you could give somebody advice on somebody who wanted to change their life. What advice would you give them? Get out of your own way. Mm-hmm. You know, um, our our minds put these barriers up, making us think that we're less than, and that that well, for me, that I can't do it. 
mm-hmm. you know, that it, that I'm not worth it, you know? Um, mm-hmm. There is a way out and there's such a good life out there waiting for you. I, I never, I, I would be, I would be cutting myself short if I told myself about the life that I have today, because my life just keeps getting better and better and better as the years go by. And it's like, be patient and be easy on yourself. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Could you tell us a little bit about your job right now and what you do and, and uh, you know, the aspects of that? Sure. So, um, so I came from, uh, working in the hospitality business, you know, yeah. um, when I first got into recovery, I went into what I knew, you mm-hmm. know, and that was the restaurant industry, yeah. you know, right. um, and then I became a manager and a salary manager and, you know, being in that environment, um, I got to help people mm-hmm. and we all know like the restaurant industry is kind of, you know, a lot of troubled people yeah. work in it. Yeah. So, um, I got to use what I have to -hmm. help people. Um, And then when the pandemic happened, the restaurants got shut down and I took that opportunity to move into uh, the recovery industry. So right now um, I am a recovery coach and a sober companion. Um, I get to help people, um, you know, see their worth. Right now, I'm actually working right now. I'm on a job. Um, And I show my client how to live life in recovery. You know, how that it's fun, that it's, you know, it's doable. I help them with their finances and kind of show them how to do things. You know, I didn't know anything. When I first came into recovery, I didn't, yeah, I knew how to pay bills and all that good stuff, but like, I didn't know how to manage money. I didn't know um, anything other than the restaurant industry. So I didn't know that there were options and, you know, just even simple stuff like going on TurboTax, you know, showing people that there's um, a way out, that going to meetings or going to therapy or going, that it's okay. And other people are doing it too. And, you know, to find people in the community just like you. And they're amazing people, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, now, Lisa, if you could sit down with anybody from history, past or present, who would you sit down and have a conversation with, a cup of coffee with? Who would who would that be? Okay. Well, first, Hulk Hogan. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely love him to death. Um, <clears throat> he was my childhood. He is my childhood hero. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. So I would have to say. Um, I would have to say from history, maybe, you know, gosh, maybe Marilyn Monroe. Okay. She, her story, you know, of always, she had that attention thing going on. Right. And then, but she covered, she dealt with it with her drug addiction, Yeah. you know, and, um, she didn't know how to be herself. She had to be this, mm-hmm. you know, this, um, she had that mask on of what people thought of her, which, I mean, she obviously got paid for it, but, mm-hmm. you know, she wasn't her true self. Yeah. And, you know, I got to read a book by her. <clears throat> and it was pretty cool. So, yeah. yeah. So, Lisa, where can we find you on social media? Where could we check you out? Um, okay, so I am, um, well, of course, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram. Um, but we actually, am I allowed to plug? Yes, <laughs> no, yes, here. please, plug away. Okay. <laughs> um, me, my husband, and um, a few other people, we created this platform called The Hope Shot. Yeah. Um, yeah. What it is, is um, it's an outlet for us to uh, spread the message of hope. Mm-hmm. Um, we are working on our 501c3 right now to... Um, to raise money to help put people through treatment and to get them where they need to go. Um, we have a couple different groups on, on Facebook. We have the hope shot and then we have the hope shot recovery vibes. You can reach out, you can ask questions. Um, we will, we have resources across the world, England, Scotland, Ireland, you know, um, all over the U S and, um, we're just trying to spread the message out there. So, 
So, so Lisa, <clears throat> on a little personal note, what are some of your day-to-day -day inspirations? What little inspirations keep you going day-to-day? -day? So um, I have to have a daily reprieve. <laughs> like I have to have a routine every okay. day to start my day. Um, yeah. It's something that I learned, you know, being in recovery and just being, you know, having the life that we live. Um, mm -hmm. I, you know, waking up, I right away read my daily my daily inspirations. There's a few of them that I go to. Um, okay. Uh, there's ones that are from a NA spirituality, you know, yeah. um, there's, um, let's see. So I constantly reach out to other people. Okay. Um, I am always in contact with my, my crew of women, my little tribe, okay. I like to call them. Okay. Um, I, I, I talk with people from work, you know, my husband is also living the life that I'm living and mm -hmm. we both, um, bounce things off of each other. I'm constantly on the hope shot, talking to people who are reaching out, you know, um, mm -hmm. helping people and spreading a message and, and spreading some hope is what I do all day long, whether it be work, whether it be, I'm in when a, you know, it could be a grocery store. Yeah. I, I don't, I'm not a shy person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I like to talk to people and it usually brings up something, some great conversation. And it's like, yeah. okay, God, I see you. You know, there was a reason why I was there, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and, um, good things usually always happen, you know? Yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, um, Lisa, now what final thoughts would you give our viewers? Uh, you know, anybody struggling with anything, what final thoughts would you, would you give them? Um, so let's just start with for women or men who are in a, an abusive relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, my first message would be that there are resources to, to get out of it. You know, um, you don't deserve it. Yeah. God, um, I know that cycle of abuse doesn't seem to ever end, but it can, as soon as you take a step left and move forward, you know, yeah. um, yeah. for people in recovery, don't get in your own way. Try to open your mind and be honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people who are trying to help you, that's all they're trying to do. They're not trying to block you from anything. And that's what I used to think. I used to think people that were trying to like, you know, help me and get me out of that life. They were just trying to block me from, you know, or putting me down, you know, um, trust the process. Yeah. Trust the yeah. process and be patient with yourself. And love yourself, self care. Wow. <laughs> Gotta self care. Yeah. Wow. Thank. Well, yeah. thank. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you for being on the loft and for sharing your very inspirational story. Thank guys, you for having me. Yeah, guys, you can check Lisa out on Instagram and Facebook, and you could also check her out in the Hope Shot. Guys, you could also follow me on Instagram, and remember to hit like and click subscribe. And again, Lisa, thank you for being on the show. It was really great seeing you. Thank you. No Thank problem. you. So good seeing you. <laughs> All right, guys, we will catch you next week. Have a good one. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.